All right, guys, today we're going to be kind of doing a revamp of a video that I did a few months back ranking my favorite EDC knives. And I really want to do this video because at the time I did it, I had, you know, a handful of EDC knives and now I have grown that family of knives quite a bit. So I thought it would be interesting kind of talking about some of my newer additions and um, kind of re-ranking that list now that I have a lot more knives to rank. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the patreon the instagram i'm also going to try to keep this video reasonably quick because i know that a lot of these knives have been shown in previous videos in a different alter or iteration so i get that uh, some of these knives are definitely familiar but some of them are new and i think it's uh new enough or enough knives to uh, kind of change up the balances okay so let's start off with kind of the bottom of the list now all of these knives do see quite a bit of pocket time and i just enjoy carrying them so the it by no means means that it's a bad knife if it's at the bottom of the list. But the first one for me is the CRKT Pilar with the Pilar with the Flytanium uh, with the Flytanium carbon fiber scale. So this is the large Pilar, and the reason it's at the bottom of the list is really just blade steel. And for me, I don't think blade steel is necessarily a deal killer uh, because. As I'll talk about in other videos, you know, a lot of these knives are used for reasonably light duty things. And so the kind of differential changes from outdoor knives to EDC knives, where outdoor knives, it is really important when you're doing things like game processing and fire starting or even batoning, uh, you know, to have a really durable blade steel. But having lesser durable blade steels in more affordable knives for EDC isn't really a deal killer, in my opinion. So like I said, this guy has a flytanium carbon fiber fiber scale on the show side and it is a steel frame lock on the other side this also uses ikbs ball bearings so it is very smooth not quite drop shut but pretty darn close and of course it flies out so that is at the bottom of the list it is still a really nice knife but probably just the bottom of the list so aside from that the next one up is going to be the benchmade mini grip and the mini grip has to be on this list because it is just one of my favorite go-to knives if i don't really know uh you know what kind of application i need a knife i just need a really good small all-arounder the mini grip makes a really excellent blade for those kinds of conditions Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the Spider Co. Spidey Chef. Now, I really do like the Spidey Chef, but as I've mentioned in other videos, I kind of have certain knives for certain applications. So the Spidey Chef kind of fits into that role that whenever I need a knife for either a kind of non-permissive environment or where knives might be kind of frowned upon or you know like they might be scary or intimidating the spidey chef is a really not intimidating looking knife not to say it can't be just as dangerous as any other knife but it is very non-intimidating looking and also at the same time too it is very lightweight very slim and it does not rust at all so it is a very handy knife for those kinds of applications now granted i don't find myself in those types of applications all the time so that's why it's lower on the list okay next one up that is still really cool and i try to edc it a little bit more often is going to be the double-edged dagger that is this microtech ultra tech and this is a signature line this is actually a usn or a usual suspect network i think it is um, this is a usn uh, show or meeting drop from Microtech, so this one was the 2021 drop. It features a really nice, really good looking um, green or OD green, OD green G10 handle on the show side. And then of course a nice black side on that. And of course this is a blacked out double edged dagger with the M390 blade steel. So reason why it's lower on the list is just for the fact that it is a double edged dagger. So it's not necessarily, it's a pretty intimidating blade to use. And so you kind of have to think if you're going to pull this out to cut open a box or whatever, you know, if you're at your home, no big deal. It's easy, it's fun, and it's, you know, one heck of a good cutter. But at the same time too, pulling this out in public is not necessarily the best. So this one doesn't see the most carry time or the most use, but I still do EDC it and like it. Okay, 
Next one up on the list is going to be the CRK Sabenza 21. Now this one has seen a lot of carry time over the years and I think that this is still a really good blade. I do really like this knife. It just doesn't see as much carry because I have the Nkosi. I have a few other knives we're going to mention and so this one is not like outdated but it just doesn't see as much carry time because I have options that I like to carry slightly more. However, this guy is still one heck of a knife and still very terrific. I actually kind of really love where um, this knife has kind of matured into or kind of wears into. With these CRKs, they really break in so nicely. And uh, this guy is just glassy smooth to flick open, to flick closed. It is just such a nice knife in that way. It's very, very well broken in. Okay, next one up is going to be my ZT0562. And uh, 0562, carbon fiber handle scale and this guy is on the list because it is not the most expensive or the most nice knife per se this is actually when i got it a user and abuser it came with a pretty chipped out edge which still has a few chips in it still but it is mirror polished and i definitely worked on it for a while on my wicked edge to get it up to a very nice very slicey edge but Going back to it, the reason why this is higher up on my list is a lot of high-end knives with premium steels and, you know, premium designs end up kind of getting to the point where you're kind of a little bit scared to hard use them because you don't want to damage them per se, like your Chris Reeves, your Hinderers, um, maybe even your Striders. But, you know, your really high-end knives, you kind of get scared to hard use. And so this guy is a kind of stand-in for that, especially as far as Hinderers go, because this is a Hinderer collab. And it's essentially inspired heavily off of the XM18, 3.5 inch. So, you know, it's kind of like using that, but as a much cheaper price point where I'm less scared to abuse and, you know, damage the edge, especially because the, the edge on this was already damaged. You know, I am not as scared to kind of use and abuse this blade because, you know, it is more built to be a user. So it's kind of a high end or premium user for me. Um, yeah. So next one up on the list is going to be actually the Strider. Now the Strider is another one in my opinion that is a hard user kind of abuser. And this actually is one of my kind of go-to outdoor folders because I know that it is designed to be used and abused. And of course this one is a gunner grip with the flame anodized uh, show side or lock side I should say. And uh, yeah, it's just a really great strider and i really like it it's kind of one of my more tanky blades and uh, it's very rigid very solid for a frame lock and definitely do enjoy carrying this one once again it's kind of one of my high-end blades where i'm not that scared to really use and abuse it put it through the ringer run it through the ringer because that's really what these uh striders are designed for they're designed to be really hard use blades Okay, next one up on the list is kind of a tie, but uh, I think it's leaning just a little bit more towards the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Now this is a Cutlery Shop exclusive, and this one of course is in Blaze Orange Olive Drab Green or OD Green, and it has the Satin Finish uh, Rex or CPM Rex 45 blade steel. So this is a really nice knife, and it's actually been a while since I've owned a PM2, so getting this one in the collection was kind of like a reminder of why I really enjoyed the Paramilitary 2 as a whole. This one is just super smooth, super clean. It's another drop shot blade that is just really fun to flick open very fast and very clean overall. And of course, being full flat grind, being a spider coat, it is super slicey. So it's not the most hard use blade on the list, but it is very slicey. But it is very slicey and it makes one heck of a fun EDC knife. And I've actually been enjoying EDCing this guy quite a bit here of late. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the Chris Reeve Knives Large and Cozy. And the Large and Cozy is just a blade that I've wanted for a long time, for many years, and uh, really finally just had enough of it. Tracked one down. They're not very easy to find. These Large and Cozy's uh, are pretty tricky to find. So I ended up finding this one on Monkey Edge's website, picked it up, and really have been enjoying it. These Large and Cozy's, for me personally, are they're heavily inspired off of the Sabenza 25. That they're basically the spiritual successor to the 25. So they hold all of the properties of a 25, which I really liked, like the dual 
thumb lugs, some more easily accessible frame lock, and a few other things. So really fantastic users, and uh, I think just very classy knives. It ends up getting carried quite a bit because the great thing about Chris Reeve knives is that they look so good in just about any situation. They're good for being, if you want to class up your carry, they're good if you just want a you know plain standard run of the mill day that you need a good knife. They're good for that. Uh, they're really just good in a wide variety of different circumstances. So last one up on the list is going to be the Rick Hinder XM18 3.5. And uh, this is my purple doubt version. And I think as I've mentioned in other videos, and I'll try to just cover it lightly in this video, the reason why this really is my top uh, or my favorite number one EDC blade uh, when it comes to ranking them is I think this exemplifies what EDC should be at the core. A lot of people are going over and trying to buy, you know, limited edition or hyped up knives that they end up spending a lot of money on or are just, you know, really hard to get. Things like the Dessert Warrior, different iterations, you know, Civivi Elementums, Wee Banters, um, different things like that, that are just knives that people might not even be buying because they like the knife, but simply because everyone wants this knife. It's kind of a collective, just mass thinking or kind of think tank where, you know, everyone's just agreeing for agrees for the community's sake. Everyone wants this knife for the community's sake. So, you know, a lot of people are going that direction with the new kind of EDC community. And so this knife definitely kind of flies in the face of that. And while I think there are definitely a number of people in the EDC community that would really enjoy this knife and like it just fine, you know, by and large, you know, most people are going for more hypey knives. Not uh, the Rekinder XM18 is not very hyped up and uh, it's just a really solid, really useful blade for me that makes me happy i enjoy carrying it i enjoy the way this blade is set up so for me that's why it's my number one anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this ranked video as always god bless and i'm out